Children mining. The Democratic Republic of Congo is rich in minerals, but most are poor here, and the young are working everywhere. It's often the only way to survive. We're searching for two little boys we last saw months ago. It takes us six hours retracing our steps from the mining capital of Lubabashi, mostly on unmade roads into the heart of the former Katanga province. This is rough territory, and we complete the remaining three kilometers on foot. Jumbo. Jumbo. We're heading for a remote nomadic mining community hidden in the bush where we first spotted Dawson and Richard. Then little Dawson, at just eight years old, was struggling in atrocious conditions to help with the cobalt mining. He and his friend Richard, standing next to him and just a few years older, worked all day for a pittance, often not enough for either of them to buy food. Dawson was the image of misery. Both had little hope for the future. <laughs> When we finally reach their village, it doesn't take long to track down both boys. Jambo, 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 Dorsan's father's been digging new tunnels, but he's found no cobalt for days, so the two haven't eaten. Dorsan's father, Yassant, and his partner have already dug six meters into the ground. They have no protective equipment and few tools, just a couple of shovels. And they're doing this knowing their previous three tunnels have collapsed. But hunger is a powerful motivator. Dorsan's not allowed in the tunnel, it's too dangerous. But he and Richard help out on the surface, emptying the bags of soil almost as big as themselves, so the sacks can be filled again. There's a chance the boys can be educated. Jean Bosco? And Jean Bosco is the key. His organization's offering to sponsor Dawson and Richard at a boarding school more than 100 miles away in Labambashi. But the boys' fathers have to agree. Their decisions are immediate. They want the boys to be given a chance. It's Dawson's first trip outside his village, so his father gives him a wash. With no water source close by, this is a very rare experience. Dawson has never known anything but working on the mines. He's never known water to come out of a tap and never experienced electricity. This has been his home since he was one year old. He's saying goodbye to everything and everyone he's ever known. <laughs> the two boys now face a very different future to those they leave behind, and they wave excitedly to their friends. 
They're accompanied by Richard's father, who will check out the new school. Dorsan's father has work to do tunnelling. By the time we reach Lubumbashi, it's night time. It's an unrecognisable new world for the boys, with streets packed with traders and buyers. Waiting to greet them at the house where they'll stay for the next few months are their fellow students, a mixture of orphans and street children with no homes. The boys are shown round. This is run by the Kimbilio charity, which means children's sanctuary in Swahili. There's no electricity, but there are bathrooms, a proper roof, and for the first time, the boys will sleep on mattresses. I feel happy to be here. What does it feel like being on a, on a proper bed? I feel very good because at my home I never sleep to the place like this. Next morning the boys have had a haircut and been given new clothes and there's another first, breakfast, of baguette and tea. From now on they'll have three meals a day. Then it's into a classroom. They're getting a crash course in reading and writing with more personal tutoring here before joining the local school. But for those more used to manual work, it takes a lot of concentration. The Kimbilio workers chat to Dorsan to learn about his daily life on the cobalt mine. <laughs> The two boys are given their school uniforms. They have a chance to turn their lives round. Dawson has never even owned a pair of shoes before. The bags on their backs will now be filled with school books rather than soil or minerals. But they leave behind countless other children still being exploited. Alex Crawford, Sky News in the Democratic Republic of Congo.